Welcome to Breaking Par with Bernard Sheridan, the golf instruction podcast that helps you take control of your game. Now, here's your host, the founder of Par Breakers Golf Academy and certified Golf Channel Swing Fix instructor, Bernard Sheridan. Before they started with hashtags, so they realized this is only, you know, about four years ago. And uh, now the hashtag, that's when we invented the hashtag Ask the Pro. Um, we've got a logo for it now, had it approved by Twitter and all that stuff. So uh, it's good stuff. There's about 70 people around the world helping me with Ask the Pro at any given time. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, last night was great. It was, it was really busy last night on Ask the Pro. So. Excellent, excellent. And I know that um, you know, that's kind of like the drive here of, of uh, Breaking Par is, is to – just get it out there as much as possible to everyone and and so that they can grow the game of golf and enjoy golf more so the other question that i really wanted to ask you is uh is kind of goes on the training aid side and and that is uh what training aids do you use with your students in your in lessons and for the audience what training aids um, would you recommend uh, would, would be a good training aid for them to use to help them get better in their game or to help them, uh, you know, better refine what they're doing in, in their game? Sure. Well, uh, I have some news. I'm the new brand ambassador for Gaming Glove, which is a new golf glove that has a laser attached to it. So um, I believe in that. I think it's pretty cool. I've uh, been involved with them for a while now, and I'm going to be doing the instructional DVD with that. Um, has a mat on the ground that you trace the laser to uh, for your swing. So it's going to show you which way your swing is going, and the, and the mat will have decals where it's going. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, another uh, training aid that I've endorsed is called the Eye. Uh, you can check it out on my website as well. It's got, uh, uh, it helps my players uh, stay in their posture better. So it helps you watch the golf ball better. Um, pretty cool stuff. Keeps you from, uh, you know, moving all over the place when you swing. I'm a big proponent of not moving all over the place. Um, you know, yeah, so. centered, and it's, it's centered pivots and things like that. Um, some of the training aids that I've used since I was a kid, one of them is called the right angle. Uh, David Ledbetter invented it and Rick Smith had it. Now the guys at uh, Golf Around the World have it. I think it's great. I think it uh, helps my players from casting the club and things like that and gets them more on a better path, you know, out to the right more. So over the top so much, uh, that thing has really, really helped. And, you know, I mean, all these other aids that we use, like TrackMan and V1 and, you know, Swing Bite and stuff like that, they just help me out as a teacher to communicate better with my students. It just gives them more of an idea of where I want them to go and, and do that. So um, we did invent, if you saw online, something called the Butt Board. Uh, that has been pretty cool, uh, be able to use it outside. I know a lot of people use that you know, to fight early extension and standing up and things like that. Um, you know, we just put that together and that helps my players stay down. It's amazing. I, especially when I pull the butt board out with a group of beginners and how much better they hit the golf ball when they have their, their butt where it's supposed to be against the board and, and stay in their posture. So it's good. Excellent. Excellent. Stuff. So when you, uh, do any of your, playing lessons do you do you use any type of a thing out there too or um because i know that that there are some instructors who are in the middle of a playing lesson say hey look you know you should have done this or let's drop an alignment stick down here so you can see what your target line is or and then some are like let's not use anything out here at all because you couldn't be using that during a normal round it's against the it's against usga rules um but but i know that i was just wondering what your take on that is well, what's great about having iPads and iPhones and things like that, I can video players right on the golf course. I love doing that. It shows yeah. them what they're doing. You know, you could drop clubs down, linemen sticks, things like that around there. I think that showing them, you know, relating 
to them what they're doing on the golf course versus what they're doing on the range is really important to getting better. And, you know, when you're aiming 40 yards to the right, when on the range you're not because I got a stick down, you got a problem. No, you know? that's true. That's true. And, so uh, if they don't understand that, uh, right. then if their alignment is off, they're wondering why they're – now they're trying to kind of steer it towards the target and they're getting a lot more curve in the ball than they normally would. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so the last question that I really want to touch base on here, or well, there's actually a few more than not just the last, which is good, because um, I'm I'm really enjoying this. Uh, what uh, what is the average player that you work with in handicap? So, in other words, or is the bulk of the players that you working with are they a high to mid handicap player, or are they a middle handicap player? Or are they a low handicap player? Uh, what do you find are the most that you that come to you for for instruction? Well, it's probably mixed half and half between ladies and men. Um, so, you know, I would say the average is probably somewhere around eighteen to twenty four. Most of them that come to me, I do have a number of really great players that come to me that that you know we've got. Kids that are going to play D1 college golf. Um, we have the Traverse City Junior Golf Association Player of the Year I coach. Things like that. But the majority of them are right in that 89 to 100 range of score. And, you know, it's a big deal, I think, when, when players can break scoring barriers, you know. Bernard, it, it's a big deal. When you can bust 100 – when you can break 90, when you break 80, um, mentally, it, it has done wonders for everyone. It's good stuff. They just want to get better then when they see results, of course. Yeah, you it's know? huge breakthroughs, and it, and it also mentally um, now enforces in them that they can do it. Now they know they can do it because they have done it. Right. Uh, so, so and that makes a huge difference. Now, with those players, what do you think – is the majority of the problem that most of those players have that you're addressing most often? They don't work enough on their game. They don't work enough on their game. It's not basically a swing fault. It's more that they all have different types of swing faults. They just don't have the time to work on their game, yeah. or you think that they just don't, uh, they don't put in the time to work on their game. Which one do you think it is? I think it's they. I think it's that they don't manage their time to realize how much time it takes to get better. And that's one of my goals when I'm working with players is to try and help them and coach them into a situation where they want to come out and spend an extra hour or two or three a week working on their game. Sure. And when we can do that, that's how we can grow the game of golf, right? If we can get them to do more, they can get better. They're going to want to play more. They're going to want to spend more time at your facility. All those things. So I think that, you know, my job is, is really to get them more engaged in the sport. Yes, they want to keep, become better. There's no doubt. That's why they're here. That's why they come to us, right? But I think that, you know, when I can show them fun, different routines that they can work on, whether it be at home. And we were just talking, I was just talking with a player the other day. I said, listen, I said, here's what I do at home. I said, to, to work on my flexibility. During every commercial of every football game, I'm on the floor. And I'm stretching out. And I'm doing this and I'm doing that exercise. And that's how I keep myself, try and be more fit. You know, and then and people don't think about that. They just get in front of the TV and they're watching the game or whatever because they want to be in front of the TV and watch the game. You know, but that's part of a very small part of fixing a swing fall. But it's a huge part of it. You know, so I, I try and engage my players by doing that kind of stuff. And uh, it's good. People love it. They enjoy it. But uh, you're right. I think, I think having the time and wanting to devote the time, but not knowing what to do 
with their time too is uh is important i think that's great advice mike and and i i believe too that what a lot of the average players think is that in order for them to get better that they have to put in hours at a time as opposed to like what you just suggested little bites of things along the way during their normal daily routines or whatever it is they're doing that's really going to chip away that stone and and make it uh, happen for them in a shorter period of time. I know that I always use as a metaphor with my students that when they come to me, they're a big giant slab of marble. And what we're going to try to do is turn that marble into a beautiful form that is a golfer that's them in a wonderful finish position. And, uh, and that just as a sculptor has to chip little pieces away of that block of marble, that's how they're going to have to approach getting better at their game, that you just don't all of a sudden carve a piece of marble in a couple of weeks and exp- and then get get a, a nice end result of a beautiful statue that it takes time and effort and it's all in little tiny pieces but what they don't kind of realize is that if you do a little bit all the time that next thing you know when you look at it it really starts to take form and it really starts to happen uh, so so i think that's great advice that those little things like when they're watching commercials and things like that, how that can really make a huge difference in their game. No, it does because it, it will take a while. It might be two months, but all of a sudden you can turn your shoulders 10 more degrees. You have this much faster ball speed, and all of a sudden you can hit your irons maybe a club farther. You know, it, it, everyone's different, of course. You know, but I also relate that to their everyday life, too. Let's say, for instance, you have a desk job and you're sitting at your desk all day. Well, more than likely, your hip flexors and your hamstrings are super tight and you're not used to being in a golf posture. So, you know, stuff like that we use with golf fitness to try and get players to do more with golf fitness to get better, Um, you know, and then bringing them out on the golf course. Absolutely. Yeah, the importance of a well-rounded program is, uh, uh, which a lot of players, or I want to say a lot of instructors don't always address too. They might just address a swing fault each week as opposed to um, giving exercises, little tips, things like that along the way. I think, Bernard, it's important for me as, as a coach is to find out why they do that. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, once I know why they do that, then I can fix it. I can sit there and give them the same lesson every time, every time. Why are they doing it? You know, and if I can figure that out, it just gets better and better for them. So it's good. Yeah. So, Mike, it's it's been an absolute pleasure having you uh, on our podcast. And and for and for those of the uh, who uh, who look at us on youtube too we're going to have a actual copy of the of the video side of this since we do this via skype on the on our youtube channel and and we're real excited about that and we're so pleased that uh you took the time out to talk to us today and and we wish you all the luck in the world and hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more of you uh, in other ways um out there in the world of golf i know that you're making one of those guys who are making huge strides and really uh um are dedicated to to your craft and it, it's an absolute pleasure to uh to be able to speak with a man like that who is who is just doing it for the right reasons and and that's a great thing well thank you bernard for having me on uh definitely my pleasure my friend so is it, before we go, I just want to ask you, how can our viewers and our listeners, uh, what's their best way to get in touch with you? Sure. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Fagoff. Uh, I have a website, MikeFagoff.com. And then on Facebook for uh, our page, Mike Fagoff. So always send in your questions for Ask the Pro Show if you're following me on Twitter. Uh, you can send those in through the website. I accept them anywhere now on Facebook, Twitter, and emailing and all that stuff. And uh, love to help you with your golf game. Send them out to some of the best P 
people in the golf industry to help you. So uh, pretty good stuff. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure. So before we, before we do, our last question is, I just want to ask you, what to you is your greatest inspirational quote that you would quote to players um, to as just a quote as in your life I uh, never give up never give up and yeah. I, I agree with that I think that's I a agree. simple one right. that I I've been taught you know every everybody goes through down times in their life or bad things that happen or even good things that happen and uh, never give up always give it your best that's great Mike thanks so much again all right thank you sir all right take care bye bye yeah.